Now, you're very welcome back to the show. Now, the latest DAF.ie report into house prices has been released this morning and it shows the average price of a home has risen by 9.4% since last year, with the rate of inflation soaring, particularly in our major cities. So has the government's entire housing strategy been directed at the wrong areas? Mm. Ronan Lyons, Assistant Professor in Economics at Trinity College, wrote the report and he joins us now. Ronan, you're very welcome back very to the well. programme. Thanks for having me on. So it seems like we are heading back the same direction we were in the mm. mid-noughties, uh, mm. with the property uh, getting out of the, uh, the price range of, of most people. Where has it all gone wrong? Yeah, I mean, even just to put that in perspective, over the last three years, we've seen double-digit increases basically across the country on average. The picture does vary a little bit mm -hmm. county by county, and the timing's a bit different. Dublin went quiet for a year after the central bank rules, and now it seems to be back up at close to 10% inflation. Oh. But if we had another three years, okay. like the three years we've just had, mm -hmm many parts of the country would be back at the same prices we saw in mm. 2006, 2007. In particular, the city areas would be back at the peak. Yeah. And that's, that's very worrying because that's not a target. In fact, it's the opposite. This is, as we were just chatting before yeah. we came on, this is about affordability. Where of can you afford to live? Yeah. And my worry is, going to your question, my worry is that a policy has been focused on demand. And I can understand that because demand means households and that means voters. Mm. So if you say we're going to help first-time buyers, that sounds like you're doing them a favour. But if you give all first-time buyers more money, then of course all you do is push prices up and you don't necessarily have yeah. more properties. I, I had a Christian brother teaching me years ago and he had this expression that a blind man on a galloping horse across in ring could see that that's going to cause problems. <laughs> like, you know? So I mean, if you, are, if you, take, if you give everybody the same increase, uh, the same incentive, obviously all it's going to do is push up the average price and, and that I presume has been a big uh, contributor to the, the house price inflation we're seeing. Yeah, I yeah. think the, the minister would argue and I think uh, other ministers and, and policymakers would argue that well if we can get prices up a little bit more it'll be become viable to build in some parts of the country, then you'll see more supply. But I, I suppose my response to that is you've prices and you've costs. Mm -hmm. And if, if costs are out of line with prices, you can either bring down your costs or push up prices. And I think pushing up prices is the more dangerous way to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's figure out why costs are so high and, and tackle that. Well, Ronan, as a, a house fanatic in the sense of that I love going online and looking at houses, obviously I can't afford any of them. But, um, you know, when you look at that from that perspective, you know, you were talking about building areas like Wicklow, it's impossible to get land, you know, um, Dublin City South, Dublin City uh, Centre, also on the north side, and Wicklow are the most expensive. So really, where do we go from here? And there's a certain amount of fatalism about... Uh, there they are there, the prices yeah. are not going to lie. It, there's a certain amount of fatalism about, well, you know, Dublin is a major city and prices have to be higher than in other parts of the country. This is a relatively new phenomenon. If you look, if you go back to the mid-80s, prices in Dublin and the rest of the country were quite similar. Mm -hmm. Now, in Dublin, your uh, 40,000 punts would have got you a smaller property, but it was still 40,000 punts in Dublin compared to uh, the rest of the country. It's only in the last 30 years, and that comes down to land use uh, and how we use land. If, if you've got more and more people who want to live within, you know, uh, at 45 minutes of mm. O'Connell Bridge, then you need to allow building up at some point. And if you look across at the Dublin skyline, or indeed at the skylines in the other cities, um, we just don't allow building up. Mm. I was in this city in Canada called Saskatoon. It's about 100,000 people. And in, in a city that small, you still had this central business district with a, a few skyscrapers in the yeah. middle. That's, that's a healthy city. You allow building up where it's viable. We have cities that are far bigger than Saskatoon, and we don't have anything like the kind of cluster that they have. Indeed, indeed we don't. Um, so the price increases, um, we're looking about a 40% increase. Uh, is that in Dublin since uh, the, 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 the trough after the, the Celtic Tiger collapsed? So the 40% is the national average. That's the increase we've seen on average. But actually, when you go into certain parts of Dublin, Dublin as a whole is up by more than 50% on mm -hmm. average, and mm -hmm. as are Cork and Galway. Mm -hmm. and in some parts of Dublin, particularly central Dublin, prices are up by almost 70% yeah. from the yeah. lowest point. But of course, Ronan, we've got to talk about the wages. You know, most salaries, I mean, the average salary is 37,000. So how can people even afford to get on the ladder, let alone begin to save? Because you're looking at a six-month window of where banks will need to see savings, and people are just literally on the bread line. And that brings in the rental sector mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. You, you can't save if rents are more expensive than mortgages. So uh, that, that there's a, there's a, the real shortage of, of homes, we're building about 15,000 homes a year. We need about three times that. The real shortage is actually not in the three and four bed family homes 
part of the market. It's in the one and two bedroom apartment part of the market. And that's quite surprising, Ronan, really, mm. because, I mean, my understanding of it was that people who got caught in the one and two bedroom homes when the, when the Celtic Tiger collapsed uh, have been stuck there. So, right, if they can, uh, banks are lending again, if they can now afford uh, to get out and buy uh, a small home somewhere, does that not free up the, the one and two bedroom apartments for the next wave of well, startups? If you think about the population as a whole, we're, we're dividing into smaller and smaller family units. So in the 1970s, the average household had four people okay. in this country. We're now below three and we're heading towards two. And that's the same in, in other parts of Europe. We're, we actually have the largest average household size, the average number of people in, a, in a, a family in Europe. But we're heading down. And as that happens, you need more and more one and two bedroom apartments or one and two bedroom homes and fewer and fewer three, four and five bedroom homes. So there is a redistribution, if you want to think of it in that sense, mm. you can shift people around. But we need more dwellings. Okay, as well. so, so supply is obviously the big problem, right? So we need to be building more houses. Is there anything we can be doing to be incentivising empty nesters to downsize? Is there, is there any uh, economic stimulus that can be put in place to, to help uh, people make that decision? Well, the funny thing is, uh, and I can say this because I don't have to get elected, in other countries you have a much bigger <laughs> property tax. Okay. That's, the, that's the incentive. You get to 55 or 60, the kids have moved out, you look and you say, I'm not going to pay this €2,000 bill um, just to have the extra spare rooms, yeah. I'll downsize. We're not going to ever have a property tax that size here because nobody's going to get re-elected mm. on that kind of promise. So what you're really saying here, and you've said it a few times throughout, is that there's, been, there's political approaches to solving the housing crisis and then there's economic uh, or social approaches and the two aren't um, um, yeah, uh, overlapping, aren't interwoven at the moment. Yeah, so if, if you're not going to use the... That would be the, the stick, then you've got to have a carrot. And I think the real carrot to draw somebody in their 50s or 60s out is to have something nice to move into. Okay. And it comes back to the undersupply. We need to get local authorities, particularly in suburban areas, to allow three, four, five storeys, uh, apartments and, and townhouses. That will cater for people who are interested in downsizing. It needs to be of a, of a kind of home that they're, they're proud to move into. And rather the than location just, they want to live in as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah, well, it has to be close to their amenities as well. Many do that, well. though. Many do. Family friends of mine and fathers have... But you know, not, not enough, I think, is the not Point. Not enough, absolutely, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. a new trend, I suppose, for people in, that are slightly more mature. It yeah. is. There was uh, work that I was part of last year for the, for the housing agency that looked at the housing needs of Ireland's older persons. Mm -hmm. And when you ask them, they say, oh, well, I'm, I'm happy in the home that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And then when you ask them why, it's the location. It's yeah. not the dwelling. It's, it's, not, actually, the it's yeah. not actually the, the, the house they're in, it's the area they're in. So we need to allow a densification of the suburbs. We need to allow three, four and five storeys in the oh, suburbs. So, so a, a final question to you, Ronan. Is there any hope... <laughs> That's my question. ..that we could actually find some sort of a resolution to this? Yeah. It's been going on as long as I can remember and, yeah. and, and we haven't seen... We seem to kind of, you know, fooster around and not come up with any proper answers to it. Well, if I can summarise... 2011 was the, the, the year that these problems started emerging. So That's it's, when I was it's more going than, to buy and I didn't, <laughs> thankfully. It's, it's more than five years ago yeah. that, that the shortages um, uh, emerged. So, But that, the lifetime of that government, 2011 to 2016, was really worrying about legacy issues, things mm -hmm. about past overbuilding or overlending, yeah. negative equity, mortgage arrears and so on. It's really only since the new government has come in that we've been looking forward rather than backwards. Mm -hmm. And the first year of that government has been about boosting demand. Mm -hmm. Now... I think the measures have been taken. The central bank has relaxed mm -hmm. its rules, help to buy scheme is in, and there's issues on the rental, uh, there's been measures on the rental side as well. Now that those are in place, I think the government has the political space to start really tackling the supply issues. That's okay. my optimistic okay. version. <laughs> However, okay. it is going to take time. It, it'll yeah. take two to three years to get the supply thing sorted. So okay. Light okay. at the end of the tunnel, maybe. maybe Hopefully it's around. not a train coming okay. this way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Ron.